Hey guys, it's Channel Heat here. How's everyone doing today? Uh, for today, we are going to be uh, taking a look at what each AI in Halo 3 looks like with active camo on. So previously, I showed you guys the uh, Marines, um, including Miranda Keys and Johnson, what they look like when they have active camo on, as well as when they have invincibility on. But what about the other AIs? There's plenty of them in, um, in Halo 3. And just like with Halo 2, um, we, we took a look uh, back then, but Halo 3 does not have an assassin skull, so in order to test out each AI, I had to mod it so I, that I was playing as them, so that I could manually activate active camo on each AI, or each biped, to be specific. But, yeah, so let's get on with it. So starting with the grunt, as you can see here, um, nothing too special with the grunt when it goes active camo. It's, uh, it does it pretty well. There's nothing too strange during a transition. It's pretty much as you'd expect from any uh, any character that turns active camo that's supposed to. The Marines, as we saw, really aren't supposed to turn active camo. So that's why like, you see like some really creepy results with the Marines. But with the Grunt, you know, it's fine. And in Halo 2, it's fine as well. Um, that's because, I guess, Grunts were meant to turn active camo. But as you saw there with the invincibility, it still had the uh, electrical effect, just like the Marines did. Now with the Jackal, because the Jackal is all skin, and like with the Marines, um, skin like that, when you turn on active camo, it just like turns into like a ball of light, which is what happened to the Jackal here. Uh, from certain angles, you can still kind of see it. Um, it looks almost like an x-ray at this point, at certain angles. But... For the most part, the uh, Jackal was, wasn't really meant to turn invisible either. Um, but, you know, a after the transition period, it, it looks mostly fine, except for its eyes. Um, and then with invincibility, the Jackal actually looks pretty cool with invincibility on. So let's take a closer look. Uh, first of all, it's shield. It's like all ripple effects with the invincibility. And then Jackal's like hair or spikes or whatever those are, uh, they look like they're electrical, I guess. <laughs> like. Like, you know, there's like electricity going through them. So it, it's a pretty cool effect actually on the Jackal and the Jackal's shield. Uh, but it, the rest of the Jackal is, you know, perfectly fine with this. So yeah, that's the Jackal for, and I'm gonna tell you like right off the bat so I don't have to keep repeating this every time, but pretty much every uh, AI I test when they use invincibility, once it wears off, they'll still have like a little electrical cloud effect on them afterwards. So just a heads up. Now, what the next AI we're testing is the Hunter. So, this one, and for pretty much most of the rest of the remaining AIs, I had to go into uh, Forge slash custom games in order to test them because it would crash a lot in campaign. So, it's just easier this way. And now I have my, my own sandbox map, basically, with a bunch of, uh, with pretty much every AI on the maps. I could technically make custom games. Um, with each different uh, AIs, I just wish more people uh, like had. I, I just wish like mod modding Halo 3 was like you know more widespread, as in like you could play it like with more people like like you could on PC. But unfortunately, modding on a 360, you can only play with other people who have modded 360s, and you can't go on Xbox Live with it either to host custom games like you would on a PC game. But oh well. So that was the hunter. Nothing too uh, too different about it, except its its skin also, you know, looked really weird in active camo. Uh, up next we have the sentinel. And the sentinel during the transition, it it doesn't really like fade. It just kind of like turns like you know, kind of like a translucent black, and then it just goes straight to invisible. I you know, obviously the sentinel is probably the least. Um, Likely to go active camo, <laughs> definitely wasn't intended to. Um, but you know, unlike Halo 2 Anniversary, once these characters do go like full active camo, then they look mostly fun. Most of them, at least. Some of them still have like a few odds and ends. Now, the Sentinel with invincibility is very interesting. It actually, fo not only does it wrap around the Sentinel, but also forms like a separate uh, shield around them. Which is really cool, in my opinion. Um, yeah, it's just... It's like a bubble shield, almost. 
pretty awesome in my opinion. Kind of like uh, in Halo 2 when you use the uh, active camo and sentinels, it forms like a uh, distorted like bubble around them. I guess it does that here with the invincibility, but not the active camo. Now next up we have the Prophet of Truth. This one's a pretty interesting one. So let's get him to the uh, active camo. So once we pick that up, yeah, his uh, his skin it just looks really weird during the transition to uh, invisibility. Like it's glowing at certain parts. It's already see-through and there's like lines everywhere. It's like really. It's not really like that creepy compared to like the Marines, but it just looks really weird. Um, and colorful, I guess. That <laughs> would be another way of putting it. Uh, but yeah, and then the longer the transition goes, uh, from certain angles, it would just turn into like a ball of light as well. Just like the Jackal and like the Marines. So that, that's pretty much how active camo affects skin in Halo 3. Skin on characters that, you know, don't normally support active camo. That aren't supposed to use active camo, I should say. But yeah, so that's uh, Prophet of Truth for you. Next, we're gonna let him use Invincibility. So once he fades back, get one more glimpse of him in uh, that state. And with Invincibility on. At first he looks, you know, fine, but when you get up close to him, you'll see that uh, he's kind of like the Marines, as in, like, the invincibility forms like a, almost like a bubble around his eyes. Uh, and most importantly, that little holographic halo ring on his, um, his crown or his helmet, whatever, it, it looks like the, um, like the arc reactor from Iron Man. I think that's what it was called. The thing that he, he you know, that little reactor he puts in his chest on the suit. That's what uh, it reminds me of. Uh, it looks just like it, t to me at least. But yeah, and then of course the electrical cloud effect around the Prophet of Truth after that. Now, we have the drones, or the buggers, depending on what we call them. Um, once they transition, uh, the glowing parts of their body, like the little lights there in their eyes, they won't fully turn invisible just yet, only when it goes full active camo. And yeah, it's nothing uh, else that's spectacular about the drones after that point. Uh, same, actually, the invincibility, there's a few interesting things with it. Uh, f from this perspective, it's fine, but when, um, when you jump up, its wings will automatically come out. And with the invincibility on, its wings look really cool. Like, that's a pretty cool like effect, in my opinion. <laughs> But yeah, so that's it for the drone, basically. Unfortunately, you know, I was hoping that, like, for some of these characters, we'd have, like, a similar effect, like, in Halo 2 Anniversary, where, um, like, the active camo kind of peels back layers of skin and, like, makes them look, like, demonic. Uh, but unfortunately, it doesn't happen in Halo 3. I mean, there are some interesting things in Halo 3 with active camo and invincibility on, you know, the characters that aren't supposed to use it. But... Nothing as spectacular as Halo 2 Anniversary. Halo 2 Anniversary had the best glitched effects on um, on characters that aren't supposed to use active camo, especially on the Marines in Anniversary graphics. Now, for the Flood Carrier, I skipped the Invincibility because I was unable to get the pick it up to uh, pick up Invincibility power-ups, so I can only do active camo for it. And. With the uh, Flood Stalkers, what's interesting is certain parts of it, once the transition begins, certain parts are totally invisible right at the bat, while other parts, like its limbs, are kind of like a translucent black. And that's going to be uh, pretty consistent for a lot of uh, Flood forms, so I'm just going to tell you that right at the bat. And then with uh, Invincibility on, most of its body is fine, but uh, the little Flood... Um, filaments or tentacle things in front of its, of its mouth uh, it's it kind of looks like the uh, the jackal's hair with invincibility on all right up next is the flood ranged form I think that's what it was called 
I might be drawing a blank, but I'm pretty sure it's called a ranged form. But yeah, this is another example of uh, where part of its body is like translucent black, and then other parts are totally visible. In this case, its butt is totally uh, missing, just disappears, while the rest of it takes longer to uh, go fully invisible. And then moving on to invincibility, it's a uh, pretty much like the other flood forms it's spikes though they don't they do partially turn you know they, they like wrap around with the invincibility but it's not it's not what I thought it would be like the uh, the hair on the jackal or the little flood things in its mouth you know looking at this now <laughs> after I recorded it it's actually pretty cool playing as all these uh, characters in multiplayer um, I'm thinking about making some kind of um, map where I don't know like where you just play as AIs I guess and just it's just like regular Slayer except you play as AIs I feel like that'd be pretty cool to do you know just have like marine only combat so it'd be like Call of Duty or I don't know I'm trying to think of like what I could make with this for some kind of modded map I don't think many people would be able to play it but I think it'd be pretty cool to try out um you know maybe like actually because these, um, when it goes active camo, only like interesting things happen during the transition to active camo. Meaning, I could do a custom game with like one of these AI characters, like you know, say Marines, for example, and in a custom game setting, set uh, camo to always on, but have camo be like poor camo so that they're always like partially visible. That partially visible will keep them permanently like in their creepy state. So, if I did like a custom game map, with, I don't know, let's say every player is as marines, and they'll all be running around as like those creepy marines, or blobs of light, depending on the uh, AIs I choose. I'm kind of just like talking to myself now, because uh, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of this is self-explanatory, so I don't really need to like describe each character at this point. But, I don't know, I, I, let me know what you guys think about that idea. I might try it for a map, and I'm curious how many people here actually have the capabilities to play modded maps on Halo 3. Uh, it, it's modding is definitely not like uh, something that uh, you could just do like easily. You have there's a lot of things you have to do to get like a modded 360. I mean the easiest way is just to find someone to mod it for you or buy one that's already pre-modded. But doing it yourself is pretty pretty difficult. I I I didn't do it myself either. I had to send my Xbox out to someone to get it modded. Uh, one interesting thing I want to point out with the uh, flood combat elite here is that. Its armor color actually does change based on what team I picked in Forge here. And I always play on gold team. And we have a gold flood here, which I've never seen before. And I could probably make other colors of flood too. Um, so, might be something I try out in the future. <laughs> Just uh, for curiosity. But, anyways, I was, think I was originally thinking about making a map that was simply just like marine combat. So... I guess now doing all this invisibility things, I guess I could I could still make the marine combat map, and then to do the demonic marines fighting each other, um, I could just do a uh, yeah I could just make it so um, the camo settings it's just a custom game type that that's all all that's needed for that. But this is the last character we're doing, um, the flood combat marine, and. I'm not going to show the uh, elites, Spartans, or Brutes in this because you see them all the time through active camo and campaign, so it's not necessary. But anyways, I hope you guys did enjoy this and found it be interesting. Um, we're going to be moving on to newer Halo games soon with testing active camo on AIs, so stay tuned for that. And if you did enjoy this, make sure to leave a like, uh, leave your thoughts in the comments, if there's anything else you want to check out, or if you like my modded maps idea, just let me know. Uh, and other than that, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.